So today we're going to be taking a look at Darth Malak based upon his appearance from the Knights of the Old Republic video game from the 30th anniversary collection. Again, like Darth Revan that I reviewed previously, he's probably one of the most iconic action figures from that line. He's one of my personal favorite ones. And at the time I, I got this, it was probably around April of 2008. Uh, I did not get this the same time as Revan. And I explained in my last video that story that I found Revan and Malak at Kohl's for $7.99. Uh, this is not that particular Malak. But again, if you are interested in hearing that story, go back and check my Revan review. It's definitely one of the highlights, I would say, from my Star Wars action figure collecting history, being 10, 11 years old and seeing Revan and Malak at retail at a time when most people probably never did. And of course at the time Kohl's was a hidden gem to where you could probably find stuff like that, unlike the major retailers at the time. Uh, but Malik himself, he's a, I really like this action figure, like I said, there are a few inaccuracies about him and there's one thing about him I wish Hasbro did a little bit differently. And we'll touch on that here in a little bit. And unfortunately, similar to Revan, I do not have the packaging here to show you. It's a very nice packaging. It's just a really nice image of Malak is how he appears on the Knights of the Old Republic game cover. If you've seen that before, it's just uh, translated over to the packaging and it looks really nice. But what I can show you is the collector's coin that he came with at the time, which is right here. And I showed Revan previously, but there's Malak. And that looks really close to how he did in the game. He has that robust look about him. It actually looks like a straight copy from the game, actually. He's figure number 35. Just says Sith Lord 30th on there. And, of course, Darth Malak. And on the back, it just says Expanding Universe. I think pretty much this whole wave at the time was just Expanding Universe characters. He had Revan, and then he had the Turnikotsky Anakin with the tattoos. And there were a few others as well. I think the Macquarie concept as well. But definitely two very iconic coins from the 30th anniversary line. Two iconic action figures from this line as well. And like I said, this coin album here I'll touch on more in depth in a video in the future. So for the action figure itself, I'll just touch on my one complaint about it and that is they made uh, Malak here way too short. If you know anything about Darth Malak he's a very tall robust character and unfortunately this action figure just doesn't really reflect that too much. They have a little bit of a muscular build to Malak here but it definitely could be much more and of course with the height it doesn't really help out. In fact, Revan looks a little bit taller than Malak here, which is totally inaccurate at all. Malak is definitely a, at least a whole head taller than Revan is. So that's my really only complaint about it. Other than that, he has a lot of nice detailing about him. He does have a unique feature about him that it's really, truly something special that Hasbro actually took the time to do this, which I'll show here in a little bit. You can definitely tell this looks like Darth Malak. And I like how they sculpted his hand here like he's using Force Lightning. And one of the signature moves that Malak uses a lot in the game and when he's using it, that's about how his hand is positioned. So I'm glad Hasbro paid attention to that detail and made it look like that. They did a lot of good sculpting work in his armor there. And just in case you didn't know by chance, uh, Malak is Darth Revan's apprentice. Uh, they were both Jedi that fell to the dark side and the rest of the story's history. So in terms of the uh, articulation, he just has a swivel at the neck there, which is perfectly fine. There's a purpose behind that that I'll show you here in a second. And he does have a hinged shoulder there, which has a very good range of motion. He does have a swivel elbow, which a lot of people have problems with swivel elbows. I've never really had a problem with it. I think it works okay for this action figure. 
then he has swivel wrists, he has a swivel waist, and swivel hips, and hinge knees, and nothing in the ankles. Normally, I do like having ankle articulation, but it's not really a big deal on this Malik. He stands pretty good on his own, and he doesn't have any, he doesn't really have an awkward stance about him. In terms of accessories, he does come with his lightsaber here, which I'm not sure if the hilt is totally accurate to what Malik has in the game, but it's definitely a unique lightsaber hilt in its own right. It looks really nice. So you can see there, a lot of good detailing. And he also has this unignited hilt as well. And it's actually the same hilt that comes with uh, Darth Revan. Just a lighter shade of gray. Or this one's more silver and the other one's more gray. So like I said, Malik does have a unique feature about him. You can actually uh, take his mechanical jaw off here and reveals what Malik looks like without it while Revan and Malik were doing a lightsaber duel at one point after they became Sith. Uh, at some point Malik actually cuts off Malik's jaw and I believe that particular incident happens just shortly before the first game. What's really interesting to me that Hasbro took the time to detail this. I'm pretty sure that the upcoming release, Black Series release of Malik is not going to have that. Who knows, maybe Hasbro will surprise me, but I'm leaning more towards that they won't be doing that. And they, not only did they just sculpt him without a jaw there, but they actually put a little bit of the mechanical devices on him that helps uh, give him his voice. So that's really cool. And it fits on pretty easily. You can take it off and on, no problem. And it looks really good. Oh, so just to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here he is with his master Revan. Would I recommend him for your collection? I highly would, especially if you're a big fan of EU characters, Sith Lords in general. Again, and of course, if you have Revan or you want to get Revan, you have to get Malak to go along with it. Like I said, there's some of the most iconic action figures from the 30th anniversary collection to date. And will we get a TVC Malak at some point? I would say the chances are pretty slim to none. We might get Revan here soon. Again, he was going to be released, but then there's a lot of fan backlash and he was uh, retracted at that point and he's still in limbo. But will we get Malik? Who knows? I would say the chances are much, much slimmer for Malik. But who knows? Hasbro might surprise us in the future here. And we might finally get Malik. But unfortunately, they're, as we've seen with the Black Series Malik that's coming out here soon, he's not entirely accurate to how Malik looks in the original game. They definitely changed his look a little bit for the new one or the remake. So I would assume if they did a TVC Malik, he would look more accurate than that instead of how he does here for the original game. So who knows, maybe a lot of fans would not want a Malik at this point after seeing that. Uh, but again, you could probably, Malik is definitely cheaper than Revan in most cases. I've seen a Malik Gold brand new for the 50, 60, 70 dollar range. If you get one loose, you might be able to get one for 30 which isn't too bad. I would definitely jump on that if you see it. But anyways, that concludes this review. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more reviews in the future. There will be plenty more to come. And if you have not already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Greatly appreciate the support. And check out the Instagram link in the description as well. More posts on that soon. And thanks for watching.